I'm not really much of a hobbyist. Whatever I get into, I get like really, really into. When I gave up music, I went extreme. I thought, oh, okay, I'll get a PhD in literature because I really love that too. And I only left the PhD program because I was lucky enough to get asked to join the Smashing Pumpkins. I was born into KISS because my brother was a fanatic. My earliest memory really is, is KISS. I have pictures at five years old at Halloween at school and I'm dressed up like Ace Frehley. He was always my favorite member and so it was, seemed very natural to want to emulate what he was doing. I had a guitar when I was 12 or 13, an acoustic first and then an electric. You know, I realized pretty quickly after having the acoustic guitar that I wasn't gonna be able to sound like Randy Rhodes on acoustic so I had to beg my parents for an electric. I took lessons from my teacher for three or four years. His roommate heard me having my lesson and went and asked my teacher, like, hey, who was that playing in the other room? He said, oh, that's my student, Jeff. So then I joined my teacher's roommate's band, which is a band called The Violet Bernie. So right out of high school, I was lucky enough to start playing literally every single club in LA. I joined another band called The Lassie Foundation, which was Actually, a different experience because I was able to be part of like the very early DNA of the band, and that was my main vehicle for kind of my musical expression for many years. We made three or four records, a bunch of EPs, toured a bunch. As fun as it was, it was actually at the time very disappointing because we never achieved the success that we were looking for. So when I realized that my music career wasn't going the way I wanted, I decided to pursue my doctorate in comparative literature and go into that. That really consumed my life, you know, for the next three or four years. I really invested myself into that and didn't even play guitar that much during that time, you know, because I was obviously, you know, becoming a scholar. <laughs> Got a text message one day from a friend who said, hey, Smashing Pumpkins are reforming and they're going to be needing a guitar player and a bass player. I really think you should audition. And um, we started hanging out and I started playing with Jimmy and various bass players. It came down to like, well, we think we found the right guitar player, you and the bass player, which was Ginger, and let's bring Billy down and let's go for it. So that very first rehearsal with Billy was just disastrous. Billy walked in and was like, hey, I don't really want to play any of those songs. I got all these new songs I want to try out, and so he started just playing all these riffs. It was just way beyond what I could even comprehend or play, and Billy and Jimmy were just flying all over the place, and I just got thrown off the horse like within the first 30 seconds, and I felt like all my rock and roll dreams kind of went out the window right then. So I remember I went home to my little studio apartment and just fell face first on the bed and just laid there for like three hours. <laughs> I thought to myself, well, I got a really good thing going on here at UCLA, and you know, the Pumpkins thing, I'd been playing guitar for eight hours a day, and it had really taken over my life. About a month later, I was on campus at UCLA going to one of my seminars, and I got a call from Jimmy, and he said, hey, I want to talk to you about that last rehearsal. You know, Billy and I talked, but we thought it went pretty good, and I was like, what? Like, how could you say, like, it was terrible. <laughs> It was awful, and you know, they thought that there was something there, and they said, let's continue to play, and but we never did, actually, and then just like another week went by, and they said, hey, you know what? You got the gig. And once I joined the Smashing Pumpkins, I started having a different relationship with musical instruments. It became a thing where I wanted to switch guitars on every single song of the set because I could. It was like a kid in a candy store. I'm like, I want to have one of these, one of those, I'm going to play this guitar on that song, and as I kind of matured, I realized like, oh, I'll play better and be more expressive if I start limiting the amount of instruments I'm playing and really find the instruments that speak to me, not just switching because I can. But with these custom-made Pacificas that I'm playing now, it really is the culmination of many years of recording, touring, playing different guitars and trying to put as much of that knowledge and information into one guitar that I can play most of the night. You know, the guitar is at its 
kind of purest point should be just a vehicle for your kind of inner voice coming out through it and expression. I've never found an instrument that allows me to play more like me than these Pacificas. <laughs> it's true though, it actually is true, you know. You know, I was lucky that they made them exactly how I wanted. It's, it almost makes me cry sometimes. Usually you play a guitar and you're like, ah, oh, I really love this guitar, but I wish it was like this, or I wish this, this is like, I don't have any of that because they built these exactly how I asked. It makes me emotional in a good way because as a guitar player, I mean, who gets to say that? You want almost like the instrument to disappear where it's an extension of your body. So a lot of the things that we've worked on on these guitars in particular, like how the neck connects to the body and the heel and access to the upper frets and the contours on the body of the guitar itself, really make the guitar just so comfortable to play. When we talked about building the Pacificas, I was like, I gotta have one with the Sustainia. And it's really a tool that I use all the time now. And I like it because you can push it to extremes and get kind of crazy otherworldly sounds from it. Like it does things on its own, then I love to be able to react to that. This guitar is fluorescent, it's bold and daring, and I want to feel like this guitar looks. The only thing that you have control over is the work you put into being a musician. You know at the end of the day how much work you've put into being that musician and no one can take that away from you. If I wake up and I practice and I put in the hours, I just know I have a better day and it kind of makes me feel like I'm in control of my destiny a little bit. I think we can get distracted by wondering if I have the right photo, if I'm getting the algorithm correct. You know, these things are all just distractions from really what we're supposed to be doing, which is being an artist. Yeah.